Hello there and welcome. This is the fourth video of the series and um, we would like to continue our nice GUI journey. So what should we do? <clears throat> Let's see how we can create a timer. So timer.py from date time we would like to import date time and from nice GUI import UI and we use two with statements and the first one is going to take the row where the classes are items center and the clock is going to be a UI dot label Come on, and uh, the T is going to represent the UI dot timer, and the interval is going to be 0.1, and the callback is going to be a lambda function, and we will use the clock dot set text date time that now and here we are going to use the str f time so we are going to create a string format time and basically let me just bring it down we would like to say that this is a person sign x that person sign f and we would like to Hmm. Date time now. We use the set text. And I seem to have one more than I should. Ah, let me just copy paste it. Uh, so basically this is where the formatting comes from for the time or the timer and then we would like to have the UI that checkbox active and we use the bind value T and the active as arguments. Let me bring it up and then UI.row with statement is going to use a lazy update and none. And after that, we have the new text, which is going to be the date time that now and that str f time and person sign x dot person sign f and uh, last five is removed from the string so we create a <coughs> string formatted time and we remove the last five characters which are not relevant from our perspective and if lazy clock that text comma eight equals to new text comma eight then we return otherwise the lazy clock that text is equal to new text and the lazy clock is going to be a UI that label and the UI that timer interval 0.1 callback lazy update and the UI that run is going to bring this alive or bring this to life 
let's see how the timer works. As you can see, we have the working active button and we see the updates. All right. So the next topic that I want to show you is how, how you can uh, create different pages in nice QA. So for example, pages.py from nice GUI, we import the UI and at ui.page home and let's define home ui.label welcome home and ui.page about ui.label about and uh, we would like to use ui.link so visit home and we say that this is the home function and the ui.link about and about and now we can use the ui.run so let's run it python pages and ui.link all right so now if i open up the web browser i have to visit home and the about all right oh. <laughs> what should we do we also have the option to add uh, parameters for pages so for example new i page and we say that this is a parameter demo count and param is going to be the function and we say that the demo is going to be a string and the count is going to be an integer and the link so ui that label is going to say that the demo and the count values are like these so count great and ui that link <coughs> parameterized and here I will say that this is the parameter hold on and Danny and 32 let's save it and if I run pages once again, I can see that I have the parameterized one, the URL changed, and we can see how we have passed parameters to the page. All right. What else should we do? Um, we also have the option to redirect from the application so redirect that py from nice 
GUI, import the UI, and we say that at UI.page we have a redirect, and redirect is going to be the function name, and basically the UI.label, and this will be redirected to Google and UI.button and go and we say that on click we have the lambda function with the UI that open and Let's give it the HTTPS google.com and the UI.button redirect on click lambda UI.open redirect and we can use the UI.run so let's see redirect that py and if we open it in the browser at first when the application loads we have the redirect button then we are at the context root which is supposed to have the redirect after the go and we are at google so in this video, that was all I wanted to show you. See you in the next one.